Hi everybody! It has been so long since I've uploaded anything on either of my channels and I'm really sorry about that. Things got really busy in Japan and then things got busy back home so it was like I didn't really have the time or the mentality to make a video but I'm gonna try and change that and make a little bit more because I really miss making these. As you can see, I am back. I have been back from Japan for a few months now actually. I really miss it. I really loved it. It was so much fun. So today I'm gonna make a video talking about the five things that I miss the most about Japan. Begin, Begin countdown. countdown. Number five, the trains. Believe it or not, I actually really came to love the Tokyo subway system. I was so intimidated by it when I first got to Japan and before I even went to Japan I had heard that it was really complicated and really confusing and you might get on one train thinking you're going one direction and then suddenly you end up in Hokkaido and it was just like ah! So I, <laughs> so I was really really nervous about that and I kept telling people as a joke like if you get a call from me and I'm somewhere in Hokkaido please send someone to come get me. Um, I was so worried about just getting lost and not really understanding the trains. But once I got to Japan, and especially my time in Tokyo, and I started using the trains, I realized how convenient they were. They were so convenient. Were they expensive? Yes, but they were very, very convenient. The train system really isn't that bad once you get used to it. The lines are pretty... The stations are where I got turned around. The lines... The lines are not so bad. I can still remember how to get to my hotel in Hatagaya. I actually remember it really well. I always I know how to get there from um, the airport. You get on the Sobu line from Narita and you go into Tokyo Station. And then Tokyo Station you transfer on to the Yamanote line and then from the Yamanote line you go to Shinjuku and then at Shinjuku you transfer onto the Koi line and they take the Koi line to Hatagaya, which is only two stations. I also remember how to get to the college I visited when I was in Japan. It was I like I don't know, I just got a feel for the trains and I really like them. They're really convenient. And since I've been back I've been using a lot of public transportation here um, and that's actually how I've been getting to and from school most of my most of the time is by public transportation it's not the same it's really not there's there's just something about Japanese trains that I just enjoyed more maybe it's because people were more quiet so everyone is so quiet on the trains it's actually really nice because you don't have like you're really loud and obnoxious people who are like <sighs> number four the food I love Japanese food so much. If I could eat Japanese food all the time, I would. It is so tasty. <laughs> I really can't, I really don't know how else to describe it. It's just so good. So the first few weeks I was in Japan, I was actually eating food from convenience stores. The food at the convenience stores are really good. I would get like ramen and soba and what else did I get? I got like this weird like chicken udon kind of thing and it's really good. Like I cannot find good food at the convenience stores in America. Like it's all like gonna give me like diabetes and whatnot or whatever. I mean probably theirs will too, but I it doesn't feel like it will. And the, the food is just so, so tasty, like really no matter where you go. The only thing I will not eat is natto. I hate natto. I tried it and I almost died, true story. And anything else, like the restaurants I went to, the food was always good. Everything new that I tried was good. Um, and then my second two weeks I had would have um, home-cooked meals. So it was really, 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 really fun and delicious and oh, I miss Japanese food. Also, when I was in Japan, I got really, really addicted to melon pan or to melon bread. I had had it once before going to Japan 
and I had fallen in love with it. And I was in Japan, I was exposed to the bakeries. They have like individual bakeries, um, something of which I haven't seen a whole lot of here. But they've got like just little bakery stores and shops and whatnot. And so I would go in and just buy so much melon pod. It was so, it was so bad. It, actually, I got made fun of a couple times for this. I would just kind of sit if I was like working on something. I would just sit there with my melon pod and just kind of munch it. I think I bought maybe two or three at a time usually because I wanted them to last a little while and then like a day later they'd all be gone. I got so addicted to melon pond and I haven't had any melon pond since I've gotten back and I'm going through like melon pond withdrawal. <laughs> like I need it. I need my melon pond. Give it to me. Give it to me. Number three. The shrines and temples. The shrines and temples in Japan are beautiful. Hands down, just some of the most beautiful places I've ever been to in my entire life. My personal favorite was um, Hushimi Inari, which is in Kyoto. It's a mountain climb. It's a mountain climb. Like you're climbing up all these mountains. They've got like the red gates, and um, it's absolutely just beautiful. I did a video of it actually. I have a video of Fushimi Inari on this channel. Um, so if you want to go check it out and see how cool it is, go do that because it's really cool. And if you're going to Japan, put that on your list of places to go. We didn't get to climb all the way up to the top because the friend I was with was kind of sick. So we got about a little, I think a little bit more than halfway and then we had to come back down because she wasn't feeling too good. It was also really hot. Uh, summer gets really hot in Japan, but next time we go, which is hopefully gonna be next summer, ah, um, we're gonna go all the way to the top of Hushimi Inari. Like the architecture of the shrines and the buildings, like we also went to Kiyomizu Dera, and that was beautiful. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. Like you stand out on the balcony and there's just trees. There's like tree, there's like trees and then you've got like the city. Like you can kind of see the city popping up out of the trees. It's really cool. Hard to explain, but it was very beautiful. If you're interested in the temples and shrines of Japan, Kyoto is definitely the place to go because there are so many and they're usually like all within walking distance of each other. Number two. Scenery. No matter where I was in Japan, I love the scenery. When I was at the top of Tokyo Tower and I was looking out over the vast, and I mean vast, concrete jungle, it was stunning. It was beautiful. It was breathtaking. I could stare at that for hours. I did stare at it for hours. I was like, oh. This site just, it never got old. It was so, so beautiful. Also, fun fact, if you go to the Tokyo Tower, make sure you go to the bathroom at the very top of the tower because the bathrooms there are so cool. Oh my gosh, oh, I should have taken a picture. Oh well. Even in the cities, like, no matter where you were, there was always something really cool or really pretty to look at. Even walking around like Akihabara, I'm like, this scenery is so cool. And then we're walking around Fushimi Inari, and it's like, this scenery is so cool. It's so beautiful. Like the nature in Japan is just so, it's, it feels different. Um, it, it's, it is different from the kind of the scenery you see in America. Like there aren't really evergreens, or I didn't see any evergreens. So there weren't any like pine trees. I didn't see any pine trees. I don't even know if they have oak trees. I have no idea. I don't know the kind of trees. Then when I got down to Takamatsu, which is where my friends live, there were rice paddies everywhere. And you all would not believe how beautiful those rice paddies are. It kind of looks like an open field, except it's not really one like out in the Midwest or whatever that you can really go out and play in. Because if you go out and play in it, you're kind of killing the rice. But it's still just, it is beautiful to look at. It's beautiful to drive by. Every time we drove by these rice fields, like they were just so, <sighs> I just felt so cold. My friend also had this really neat view from her balcony. She had a huge balcony of her apartment. I think her balcony was bigger than her apartment. <laughs> but on one side, you could see like the city and the city lights and kind of down the road towards where like the shopping strip was. But then on the other side, you had the mount, you had the mountains, you had rice fields, you had a few scattered houses and you had the sunset. You could see the sunset perfectly. I would go out on that balcony probably almost every night 
just to go out and catch part of the sunset because I don't I don't get that here there's too many there are too many trees and too many buildings in my way so I don't really get to see the sunset but there I got to watch it almost every night um, and from a, in a really pretty view I took so many pictures I remember going out there my last night and like watching it and I felt like this was gonna be like my last night ever. I was like, this is the last time I'll ever see the sunset. I'm gonna do kind of a watch mojo type thing and say, before we get to our number one, here is an honorable mention. I probably should have made this the top six things I miss about Japan, but oh well, here's my honorable mention. I really, really miss the convenience stores really miss the convenience stores. The thing I like to tell people when I'm talking about the convenience stores in Japan is that they were actually convenient. In Japan, you are never far from a convenience store. Ever, unless you live like way up in the mountains or like way out in the country, then it's a little bit difficult. But if you're living in the city or in a city, you are never far from a convenience store, which is really nice because the convenience stores literally have everything. They've got like snacks, they've got like full meals, they've got umbrellas for five bucks. I really want that my umbrella back. They've got magazines, you know, they've got like, you know, the magazines and the mangas and they can have clothes, I've heard. And then they've got, um, apparently they've got underwear there too. I did not know that. Um, so there you go. Some convenience stores carry underwear. How about that? The thing that I always tell people is in Japan, it would take me five minutes to walk to a convenience store. Just five. Like, I had one, like, literally, like, right down the road from my hotel in Kyoto, and that's where I got dinner every night. It was my, it was the convenience store, it was the 7 Eleven. Um, and yes, it was a 7 Eleven. There are lots of 7 Eleven. Except they're called Seven and I Holdings in Japan. Not sure why. I could walk five minutes or less to a convenience store when I was in Japan. No matter where I was. If we were hungry, we're like, oh look, there's a convenience store. It takes me five minutes to drive to a convenience store in America. The closest convenience store to me is is a seven it is a seven eleven, but I have to get in the car and drive about five minutes to get there. Which doesn't seem that bad when you compare it to but when you compare it to five minutes walking versus five minutes driving. I really miss the convenience stores in Japan. And every time I see a 7-Eleven I get really sad because I really am like I really want to go on and be like, I'm gonna buy rice balls because the rice balls were so good. And then I remember I'm in America and they don't have rice balls at the 7-Elevens here. Ah. And the number one thing that I miss about Japan is my friends and my family. And not my American friends and family. Although I did really miss my American friends and family. Don't get me wrong. I had to call my mom so many times when I was in Japan and just be like, Hi mom! But I'm talking about the friends and the family that I made when I was there. When I was in Japan. For the second two weeks that I was in Japan, I stayed with a friend who I had met two years previous. Um, actually in America. When I, and then when I was visiting Takamatsu, she let me stay at her house and I was there for about two weeks. Her family really just, like, <laughs> it makes me so happy when I think about it because, and then it makes me miss them because I love them all so much. But her family did really, they, they took me in and it was, it was such a nice feeling. I, I was so worried about that. I was like, what if, you know, like, I'm like a little too weird, what if, you know, they're not necessarily like, you know, too uh, keen on the idea of having an American in their house? I mean, she's an American. <laughs> she, <laughs> I was really worried about how, what, they would, what they would think of me and if they would kind of perceive me in a negative light, but they didn't at all. And it was so, so wonderful. Um, like, they were just such wonderful people, like, my Japanese mom was amazing. I spent a lot of time with her. She was so motherly. Oh my gosh, she was, she's amazing. I love her. My Japanese dad is so cool. Like, he's so funny. He looks like, um, he, he looks like a, because he has a shaved head, so we, we, he looks like a, a monk. So we call him Bo-san. So I mean, just bo -san. <laughs> And he's a fan of Tom Cruise, which I thought was hilarious. If the Mission Impossible movie I think, I don't know if it came out while I was there, but he's definitely someone who I would've gone and seen the Mission Impossible movie with because he was really enthusiastic about it. Yeah, and then my little brother was like a punk rock 
kid, I don't know, he would play his guitar and sing at like 2 a.m. when everybody was trying to sleep. And we'd all just be like, shoo, shut up. It was, but it was a lot of fun. He was um, very interactive. He was, he was, he was a sweetheart. He is a sweetheart, I should say. He is a sweetheart. And then my sister, or my friend, my friend's sister, <laughs> my friend's sister, um, she is just all around a beautiful person. I love her. She was she was kind of my anchor when I was in Japan, um, or especially when I was in Takamatsu. She was kind of someone who um, showed me around. We went to Hiroshima and Miyajima together, and, and she introduced me to like a lot of the friends that I, a lot of my new friends, and who I'm still talking to. She was just so helpful throughout that entire time and like she she's just such an amazing friend and I I really miss my Japanese family because they're they're all just one they were all just wonderful 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 people and I really hope that I can go back and visit them because I would I would love to visit them again more than anything even more than like exploring more of Japan, I would go back to Tak- if I could, I would go back to Takamatsu for an another two weeks, maybe three, and <laughs> see see if I can see if I can stretch it out a little longer. <laughs> I would visit them in a heartbeat. Okay, so that's all I got for this video. If you guys are interested in finding out more about my Japan trip and what all fun stuff happened, leave a comment below if y'all have any questions about Japan. I'm obviously not someone who lives there, so I'm probably not going to be as helpful as like Texan in Tokyo or Rachel in June, but um, I can share my experiences with you guys and kind of give you a little bit more of an insight, I guess, as to at least what it's like to travel there, maybe not necessarily live there. Although I am hoping to live there soon. My goal is to be there by the end of next year. So, yay! We'll see how that goes. Anyway, so thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time. Bye!